I'm Damon Zell, and it's time for your Eve Echoes Weekly News Update, where we dive into all the happenings of the week. But first, if you can tag that subscribe button and ring that bell, you too can stay up to date with everything that this channel has to offer. Now, I do have a correction from last week's video, and that's just in the form of a big kill that was left off the list. This 12.7 billion Balgorn kill was courtesy of PHPC, and I do apologize for forgetting it off the list. Bless you. In a baby update this week, the little man has been doing fantastic. Nothing new to really to report medically, as the only thing that happened was his scheduled monitor download, and now we're just waiting to hear from the doctor if and when he can come off it. But, as you can see, he is acting like a typical newborn, and is starting smiling like crazy and doing all those cute baby things that everyone has always seen. Alright, the patch notes this week. As you can see, nothing new this week as we start our march to the massive content patch coming in just a few weeks. But as far as official fixes, there were two. Uh, the first one being that they fixed an issue where there was a very small probability that a player that disconnected in the middle of a battle would not appear in the kill mail. The second being that they fixed an issue where in certain rare instances a pirate NPC in an anomaly would be flying one of the four Empire Faction ships. Now it has been reported that freighters which uh, are the first being finished in their construction currently are not available for insurance. Now I have looked into this and I have been told that the only reason that they appear not to be insurable is that they cannot be insured because the freighters or parts of them do not have an estimated market value yet. Once this is in place, they will be able to be insured. This should come with this week's patch. So those of you that fly these can rest at ease knowing that they will now be insured and I await the first of these freighter kill mails to be sent in to me. Okay, this week we do have some changes in the SOV map. We see that ACR has lost one system and gained two. We see that Pantheon Coalition has gained seven systems. Catch-22 has lost one system and gained one system. And we see that the Silent Federation has lost five systems and gained three. These maps are always provided to me by Exkeel of Trimark. And I do thank him every week for these. And you can find these maps on his GitHub, which the link will be in the description below. Okay, the big news this week has been an update about the inner workings of Nihil Space coming with the exploration content patch. There is a great write-up uh, about it on the official Discord and the website, but let's go to the real info and cut through all that lore. We learned the names of the new modules for outposts to spawn the dead space and condensed belts once per week that we discussed months ago here. The first is a ore gravity well trap device and the other for your PVE uh, fun is a dead space gravity well trap device. There is another condition that must be met. The outpost must be located within a solve claimed system. They say space within these created pockets will be safe uh, and warp features will not work if you stray from the safe zone it will autopilot you back in they also state that within Nihil space uh, will be chaotic and will affect capacitors recharge rate depending on what area of the pocket has been created it does get a little confusing with the wording here uh, when mining in Nihil space generated by a capsular outpost it's necessary to beware of other explorers from other parts of New Eden Fortunately, the Nihil Space Anomaly directly connected to the gravity well is stable and safe from outsiders. According to the uh, publicity acknowledged data, uh, the safe part of the region contains 30 to 35 percent of the resources. To acquire more, capsuleers have to venture into more dangerous parts of the region, which could mean you ending up losing everything. So, the other sections will be available within for exploring, and you could end up running into someone. I don't know if they are treating the wormholes and echoes like the ones in EVE Online. If they do, there are some things you need to know. Riding anomalies in wormholes are stronger and harder than out here in Null. And the second big one is that local is disabled. 
not talking in local, but the local list itself uh, is disabled, so you won't know who's in there with you. They do go on to inform us about the resources within. Most Niwa space anomalies will contain numerous deposits of rich ores. These may also exist in New Eden in small quantities, but are far more abundant in Niwa space, where rich ore contains 10 times the minerals of regular ore. Many mining practitioners have been frantically traveling to these places to amass wealth after learning of this news. Some parts of Nihilus space are occupied by pirates. They have also constructed dead space strongholds. These areas have permanent magnetic materials which you can use to enhance dead space modules. For reverse engineering, capsuleers can reverse engineer permanent magnetic materials and acquire stronger dead space modules, which are classified by their strength into B, A, and X models. Uh, these dead space models will offer capsuleers a new goal within their journey within New Eden. Expect to see a lot of compressed belts within these wormholes, and as far as the B, A, and X type, I don't know if they intend to stick with their original idea of breaking down C types uh, combined with these new materials to make B, A, and X types. Now, as an update to the story, we were just given uh, this Q&A breakdown about Nihilus Space. 1. Are people able to enter Nihil space through means other than gravity wells created by a cap outpost in the Sava owned system? There are naturally occurring ones which have the probability of high sec, low sec, and null, and the probability is similar to the probability of a dead space. Players using outposts will be able, will be calculated separately. Two. Are hostile players able to enter the initial safe pocket in any way for the instance through using the gravity well uh, your Corp Alliance has made? The answer is yes, the entrance you open can be scanned and found by other players and intruded. The safe way is to be vigilant as possible. 3. How does transitioning from the initial safe pocket to further unsafe pockets work? Will there be a warp jump gate to a new area if this is through using a gate? Is this one way or two ways? Uh, how does this work? There are many passage doors inside which are interspaced, uh, sorry, interspersed like a maze, but there are no doors communicate between different now spaces. So basically this is going to work like uh, wormholes in EVE Online. There will be other wormholes that lead to deeper sections of wormholes and each of those uh, will have to be scanned down individually. 4. How difficult should players expect the NPCs, in particular the strongholds, to be in this more difficult than dead spaces and intended for large fleets, or is it a small fleet combat? According to our internal test results, the difficulty is higher than the dead space of the same technology level, and it is recommended that more than three people enter. Some thresholds are the tonnage of the ship, uh, such as the cruisers, and uh, below a certain tonnage. Okay, so basically what this means is, yes, as I said earlier, the rats will be stronger. But now when you enter these other wormholes, okay, they use your ship's mass as a guide. Uh, as you enter in these wormholes, the wormholes start decaying depending on how much mass goes in and out of that wormhole. So you can risk the collapse of the entrance behind you. So you'll have to scan down another wormhole and eventually scan your way out to know. So you say you enter in this wormhole, say in uh, Tama, right? Uh, and the wormhole closes behind you due to the mass of uh, your fleet that comes through. Well, you'll have to scan down another you know, set of wormholes until you can find your way back out into uh, low sec, high sec, or no. And that's the thing. They can open up anywhere. You can say enter in through Tama, but then you know, exit out through, uh, say, Declan. Five, will the resources in Nihilus replenish? And if so, how fast? Uh, or if not, is it expected to keep opening new gravity wells or it will be a different mechanic? It will not be added. After the end of the life cycle, a maximum two days, the non-private space is collected or killed and uh, enters the deletion phase. The deletion phase is about 30 minutes. It will be deleted, and the outpost needs to search for gravity wells again. Now, they also gave us some question and answers about exploration. And to the woe of many, you are not going to like this one. 
The first question is, will Sisters of Eve ships come with exploration? And the answer is sadly, no. The Sisters of Eve ships will be launched uh, in August with the LP Arena. So, it looks like we're going to have to battle out in their PvP Arena and use these uh, points that you earn from that to be able to pick up the wrecks for our Sisters of Eve ships. Two, will there be a test server for exploration, and if so, when? The answer is there's no test server. The exploration update will be added to Aurora in, in uh, coming soon. Uh, you know, soon TM. They aren't going to give us a date. Uh, three, can details or an example be given of how exploration will work, in particular the mechanics around scanning or being scanned? Uh, similar to the sonar interference search, identify the mixed simple uh, harmonics and remove the interference simple harmonics. Uh, there are some factors of skill and luck, but the skilled worker can complete the operation in less than 10 seconds. The scanned person can be equipped with an anti-scanning equipment. This is the first we're hearing about this. Uh, so that when being scanned, he will receive a prompt message and increase the number of options that the scanner needs to remove interference when scanning. So, I guess like uh, warp stabs, that we're going to get this anti-scanning device, which will throw off anyone that's who's trying to scan you. Alright, so number four. Can we get the details on the market data? Uh, again, is there a reason we're not getting market data anymore? Many people feel like NetEase is intentionally not sharing these. Uh, they answer with, uh, we would like to share this data, but a lot of content has been developed recently, and Chinese servers have opened, and there is not enough manpower to take care of more uh, work at this time. Some low-priority content has been postponed for now, including sort of public market and server uh, ecological data. Now, I do have a gripe about this because I am getting reports that it seems like the Chinese server is more important than our own server, as in the new faction, the Can Yu, the Zhang Yu, uh, those ships uh, actually are on the Chinese server live, not the prototype version, and they have a ton of skins that we do not have. Now, we do give uh, are given a bonus question. Why are skins not cross-compatible with other ships of the same exact shape? And the answer is, it's caused by a multi-layer conflict, but it may be resolved to a certain extent in the future. Moving on, we have your Plex market report, and this week we find that Plex has stabilized between 2 and 2.1 million per Plex. The interdiction ship market has crashed, and PI is on the rise. In community news, this week we see a few citadels fall, however all have been either abandoned or unwanted according to its owners. The first of these to fall this week has been a old Red Machine Citadel left behind uh, by one of the six corps that migrated over to Pantheon some weeks back. The Content Coalition went in and removed this leftover waste floating within catch. Uh, there was no defense fleet since it was a leftover abandoned station. Next, we move on to Geminate, uh, where a Genesis Federation Citadel has been fallen this week by PHPC in another attempt to keep New Eden free of litter and waste of these unwanted citadels. The citadel belonged to FedEx, one of the corps that migrated over to Genesis during the fall of the Horde Empire. The last of these to fall this week has been one that has belonged to NEEC and went on a CTA to attack the WX Citadel. The Content Coalition had no one to defend the station as a Genesis fleet moved in and wiped it out. When asked, I was told that it was not used and that it was scheduled for destruction that day. However, the Content Coalition was called to a CTA instead. Genesis seized this opportunity and while the Content Coalition was deployed on an ACR uh, attack, uh, they came in and erased the Citadel. Either way, wanted or not, it's another Citadel down this week. That CTA that the, con that the Content Coalition were on was to push the WX Citadel into hull as they deployed 300 plus pilots to do so. Along the way they did fight with Pantheon Defense Fleet, however the Content Coalition would gain the grid and after suffering casualties, the Pantheon Fleet would retreat. 
The Citadel was pushed into hull uh, timer, and now we have the possibility of another large-scale battle, the likes we haven't seen for a few months within the next seven days, for its defense and possible destruction. How about we flip the talk and discuss the opposite? WECU has brought to my attention that they may have the first full constellation populated by the same Alliance Corp Citadels. BLAP has blanketed Minotaur with Citadels claiming Sov for the entire constellation and marking their territory clearly on the map. Pantheon's Chinese arm, T and Cosmos set out to hit an ACR station while in armor timer uh, to bring it to structure in the MTAG RPN3. However, a fight occurred that allowed them to test their new armor tank fleet. The small fleet of 11 defended their spot on grid against 80 ACR ships and survived losing only 3 ships while wreaking havoc to the ACR fleet. The ACR fleet suffered 41 losses including battlecruisers and battleships. The Pantheon fleet was comprised of 6 battleships and 5 battlecruisers, 3 Lodgy, and 2 guardians of those battlecruisers that made up the 5 as well as a covert ops magnet, which was destroyed. This is a testament to just how important Lodgy is to a fleet as it can make or break a fleet. This fight lasted a full 30 minutes and exhausted all the fuel that Team Cosmos fleet had brought with them. A link to the video can be found in the description below. This week in Jita on the 22nd, around 1400 UTC, we saw a lot of ships exploding on the undock to celebrate the memory of four Chinese scientists that have recently passed due to old age. The most well-known of these scientists was Yon Longping, a Chinese uh, agronomist, a uh, member of the Chinese Academy of Engineering, known for developing the first hybrid rice varieties in the 1970s and helped stave off famine in the country. He was part of the Green Revolution and for his contributions he is remembered as the father of the hybrid rice uh, to the Chinese people. It's nice to see players within the game honor his memory. In a tactic some would call underhanded and some flat out exploit, Lunar 4 of Silent Federation were waiting on a gate in ZTAC 8Q65 in Veil of the Silent for a no fleet to jump through to fight. This in and of itself would not be the action. The action would be the FC stating on voice comms that he wants the fleet to turn on all modules, group shield boosters, cat rechargers, skirmish modules, drones, everything to be turned on when they jump through in an attempt to crash the client. In this clip from the video, you can clearly hear him say it. Once, once the enemies enter system, activate any group Shield, group, cap, whatever you got. Macht's jetzt schon an. Nein, nein, nein. No, 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 no. Don't, do not activate it yet. Wait for it. Wait for the enemy to be in system. I want their clients to crash. This was a 70 ship group against 8 no battleships and 5 no battle cruisers. In the end, I'm not sure how many clients were crashed, but Lunar would win the fight and wipe out the no fleet. I am told that no has tickets into customer support about this as well. This video that the clip is from was actually posted by accident and then quickly made private, but not before a copy could be made. A link to it will be within the description below. Speaking of no, please stop. They were hired this week by Rep for the Not Purple Shoot It Coliseum Citadel Fence in MTAC O. This proves we can't have nice things. A Silent Federation fleet set out to destroy the Citadel this week. However, they were met with no and defeated and pushed off grid in a full retreat. How long will this testament to lawlessness stay up? Only time will tell. And in the north, we do have a change. The Veil Coalition, consisting of three alliances, has had its first merge. Violent by Design and Promethean Industrial have come together to form the Solar Eclipses. 
Our representatives has told me that they wanted to put aside any rumors that the Veil vale Coalition was falling apart or that they needed this merge, but instead they decided to come together to work as one family and one entity, providing a unified front for their players and to be a new powerful duo in the North. Solar Eclipses and Lunar are still one family under the TVC banner, and that will not change. In a surprise announcement this week, Honk has put forth an announcement that they have come to an agreement with Pantheon leadership and have claimed the Tor system in Fountain, and how they'll be moving to their ancestral home of YRNJ. Now this is definitely a confusing statement, as I have reported in the past that they have joined the Silent Federation. And to make things even more confusing, we see in the game a soft point by Honk in pure blind in EC TAC PAR. It begs the question, what exactly is going on within the flock? Have you ever wondered what an uninsured Balgorn would look like or cost? Well, this week, well-known figure to the Eve Echoes community, Evil Darkness, found out. It started off with panic as Ed seemingly jumped into a no police stop fleet and they hungrily pounced upon him. The great purveyor of cat gifts was unable to burn back to the gate or get to safety. Some of the community were getting a live play-by-play -play and encouraged him in his endeavor to survive. 34,778.71 insurance points to arrive the great cap sucking behemoth from the depths. They say history repeats itself, and if history has taught us anything, it's that evil darkness always goes out with a bang. This week we see the return of the salt mine, and an answer to the question what happens when a red lives in your space consistently? Well, apparently it can break a person and make them snap. Ascending Legend's own Zyklon has made his, his mission to live within Genesis' system of BZ and terrorizing its denizens with his rupture killing multiple Tornado 2s. Killing him has no effect as it seems he has an endless supply of ruptures ready to go. It's all in good fun and I am told that Genesis has almost taken him in as a mascot of sorts. Alright, we do have a Corp and Alliance Spotlight this week. Drachenblut, German for Dragon Blood. We were the 15th maid and one of the oldest corps in New Eden, founded on release day and still active and involved. Our credo is to give German speaking players a home in deep Nullsec. With a real-life first mentality, fun is the most important thing we want from the game. We are an industrial-focused corp living in the heart of Delve, but also enjoy PvE and PvP actions. With our industry focus, we are the main backbone of the Alliance industry program. We have various corp programs running to support our community, like a buyback for ore and PI, right in the system, uh, SRP for fleet actions, internal production lines for low prices, mentor program for newbies, daily fleets for PvE, mining, and PvP. We are looking for more players who want a family atmosphere to explore the depth of New Eden. The Corp leadership is a small council of members, and we give our best to consider all feedback from the player base into the daily Corp business. If you want to join us on our journey, please contact Berlin Vader, hashtag 6186, on Discord. A link to their Discord will be also in the description below. Now, I don't have any new bounties for you this week. Uh, however, the bounties from last week's episode... Uh, is still up and running, including that sweet 100% PPK up to a bill cap on tahini and a fish. Big kills of the week. T this week has a 12.4 billion vindicator from a corp mate of mine. Uh, sorry, man. OG has this 15.1 billion nightmare kill. The mercenary coalition claims this 4.4 billion bestower kill with an outpost drop. 
BSD shows Faction Cruiser Love with a 2.6 billion Ashmu kill. And Pantheon has two Raven kills from the same pilot, one for 3 billion and the other for 4.7 billion, which I think may be the most expensive Raven to count. And now it's time for everyone's favorite, the solo kills of the week and a chance to win a free Omega combo. But first, an honorable mention, a few weeks back I missed one of the uh, for the list by Genesis' own Ginger, uh, which was an astonishing 11.9 billion Vindicator kill with his Interceptor. I am sorry that I forgot it off the list. Starting off, we have Cardinal with a 1.147 billion Procurer kill. Good Space Guy with this 1.315 billion uh, Hurricane Logistics kill. Motorer and I uh, with a 3364 billion Phantasm kill. Respect X with a 3.509 billion Gila kill. Mystery Meow with a 3.562 billion Phantasm kill. Dalafage with a 3.580 uh, Badger kill. Prisniak Lugan with a 5 billion Magnet Covert Ops kill. Augie Oi Oi with a 9 billion Macarial kill. Bad Brand with a 15.1 billion Rattlesnake kill. And the winner of this week's free Omega combo is Tide with this 15.2 billion Rattlesnake kill. Okay Tide, contact me on Discord to receive your prize. And that does it for us this week. Now, if you need more news in your life, I suggest you stop on over and listen to one of Rambo's uh, Echoes of New Eden podcast, where he has tons of interviews with interesting people around New Eden. That includes FCs, Alliance leaders. He also has roundtable discussions every week. And if you'd like to be part of those, please visit him on his Discord. All right, everyone, you have a great week, a great weekend. Fly safe, and remember, we are always one vision, one purpose, one front. Good night.